Welcome to the Fish North Georgia podcast, where we talk everything fishing here in North Georgia. Make a cast over that brush pot and bring wolf packs of spotted bass up. Georgia is blessed with so many of these electric only lakes. No, I didn't say that, Danny. Don't, okay, don't so, be speculating uh, now. Welcome to this episode of the Fish North Georgia podcast. On today's episode, we are going to jump headlong into the world of kayak fishing. We've got our good friend in here, Josh Little. And Josh is going to explain to us some of the things that you may want to consider if you're thinking about getting into kayak fishing. Now, he fishes several of the competitive trails around here. He's got some experience in this. And there's a lot of information that he's going to give you, things that you need to consider if you're interested in doing this. You know, some good tips, some good advice. You definitely want to stay tuned for that. Now, this episode is brought to you by Jimbo and Lanier's Weekly Video Fishing Reports. Each week, Jimbo brings you all the information he has gathered during the previous week and presents it to you in one video fishing report. You get the baits and techniques that he used. And one of the baits that I wanted to talk to you about really quick is this Spro Rock Crawler. This thing has really been productive over the last few days. As well as a map that shows the locations that he fished with explanations on fish activity and what structure they were relating to. Those irregular features along the ditch are the places that you want to begin looking uh, for your bait and fish in order to find a spoon bite. Every Thursday you can expect the most up-to-date information to be delivered to you by Jimbo. He has monthly and annual plans available. If you spend any amount of time fishing Lake Lanier, you do not want to be without this valuable asset. So go to JimboLanier.com and sign up today. Now let's get into this episode on kayak fishing with Josh Little. All right, guys, welcome to this episode of the Fish North Georgia podcast. Today, on this episode, we are going to enter into the world of kayak fishing. And my guest today is Josh Little. How you doing, bud? Doing great. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I have, uh, I've come to know Josh over the last couple of months through various fishing channels, and uh, he has been kind of instrumental in, you know, bringing us into the kayak world over here at Fish North Georgia, just kind of sharing some information with us. So we're going to get it out to the world today, and I hope you're ready to do that. Definitely. Okay, because it is a little bit different. I don't come from the world of kayaking. Yeah. So yeah. you say kayaking to me, I'm thinking joy riding down the river. <laughs> but I have to say, and you may or disagree, or I'm pretty sure you're going to agree, it's probably the fastest, or it seems like it's the fastest growing part of fishing right now. Yes. You know, money-wise, people-wise out there, you know, in, in yep like that so we're gonna let you introduce us okay to it and what makes it so great you know yeah for you guys that do it so um let's get started just tell everybody a little bit about yourself just kind of you know why you are the one that's going to introduce me to kayak fishing um well i live in cartersville uh, government truck salesman and fishing is my passion right uh, absolutely love it okay. so i uh, got into kayak fishing about two years ago now right uh, from a friend of mine who introduced it to me so, and ever since then, it's just kind of blasted off like crazy. Yeah. So, what, what was the original appeal? Um, honestly, there was none. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. There you go. So you're honest. That's good. Yeah. Right. Um, a friend of mine did it and he fishes for striper and was showing me some stuff. Thought it was pretty cool. He told me to join, try it, try it out a little bit. So right. I went out and spent $130 on a lifetime Tamarack cheap kayak just right. to see how i was gonna like it piece of plastic that floats yep okay I and uh it was cold it was it was real cold mm -hmm. um probably not the best time to start but just to get out there right um, now you on a river uh no i actually started out on the lakes oh okay um, I, right. I didn't even mess with the rivers at first right um just because growing up i fished from banks and it was always fishing a small pond or from a lake from right. or, or from the bank so right. Um, but I tried it out and went out with him a couple of times and just really enjoyed it. Kind of fell in love with it. Do you remember um, the first fish you caught from a kayak? Yes. Okay. What yep. was that? Um, it, it actually was just a regular largemouth bass. It was out of a little private pond mm -hmm. and I caught it on one of the, uh, the Archie crankbaits or the Archie crankbaits. Yep. Right. Little, little fire tiger crankbait and, um, now, did, did you have a moment where the angels came down from heaven and it's like, you know, you caught your first one from a kayak, you know that, yep. that ah, <laughs> you know, you have arrived, you caught a fish out of a kayak. Yep, exactly. Okay. Uh, because it, I, the first time I went out, my fear was, was, okay, if I'm, if I fall in the water, I've got these boots on, they're going to fill up with water. Mm -hmm. It's cold. It's right. going to suck. 
Yeah. And yeah. and let's just be honest. You and I share the same body style. Yeah. So, okay. That's, that's yeah. a little, we're a little <laughs> round. Exactly. Yes. And so, uh, Nothing wrong with that, but no, we, we no, are. Yeah. No, I mean, you got to have that good size. That's right. So, that's right. Uh, being skinny is overrated. I think so, so too. So, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're going to say anyway. Yeah, so. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like when, when he put you in a kayak and the first time you got out there, mm-hmm. now, I mean, were you nervous? Oh, yeah. Very nervous. Now, was it one of these that had the... Uh, pedals with your feet or was you actually using the using a do paddle you, do you call it a paddle or an oar it's a paddle it's a paddle yes at what point does it become an oar when you cut one half off really i mean you think about it when you're you have an actual oar you've got one side and that's all it is, is one side okay that, listen, that's my I, thought listen <laughs> that's your thought because i was getting listen i was i asked that question and i did not expect you to give me an answer <laughs> that quick so when you answered i was like uh-oh <laughs> so totally good so okay so uh, a paddle is one on both sides, yep. and an oar is a single one, Yep. which is funny because we in the electric-only world call it a paddle, and evidently you guys call it an oar. Yes, well, I do. You call it, you do. Okay, no. All right, well, you know, if anybody's listening to that and you can correct us, yeah. you can hit it in the comments. Is, <laughs> is it a paddle? When does it become an oar? So that, that's a good question for people. But anyway, so, so you're in this uh you're in this kayak and now did you have all i know as i see it you know you guys got all, all the same stuff we got pretty much in an electric only boat or a bass boat with a sonar and all but your first time out were you just in a basic no nothing nothing uh, okay and with it being cold i had on a set of bibs had on a hoodie had on a jacket had on a life jacket a beanie. I was a little like Michelin man. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> on, on this kayak. You know, and it's funny though. I, I noticed on Facebook a lot of pictures. Kayaks, guys, they're out there all year long. Yes. Yeah. So I, I have noticed that, you know, when we're out there fishing too, they're, they're always out there, you know. Yep. Not that there's a problem with that, you know, but I do notice them like that. So you, um, here's a good question. What was the first, you know, real issue you had once you got in that kayak? The, you know, say somebody's beginning, you know, maybe like you did. What was the first thing you was like, this is kind of tough? The the biggest thing for me was I did not demo a bunch of kayaks. I didn't try any out. I just, okay, you I just bought, got in one. I bought the cheapest one, got out there, and that is the biggest mistake, and I see that all the time. Right. They'll go out and they'll buy a cheap kayak, and then they hate it, and it's because they started with something terrible. Right. They, okay, I got you. They're not stable. They're, they're not meant for bigger guys like us that... Like you, like you, yes, yes. Bigger guys <laughs> like you. I got well, and, and we're gonna get to that when we get it, when we talk more about the equipment and all that. So, I guess what I was trying to lead to is: was there a point where you're like, "Man, this ain't worth it," or was it just that fun? It it honestly was just that fun. Okay, um, it it was a whole nother feeling. You're closer to the water. Um, now, did you fish electric only or, or in bass turn like a regular big bass boat? So this is just I've always farmed pond fish, and now I'm gonna get into this, and boom, I'm taking off. Yep. That's that how it was. Yep. Okay, so th- you, this is your, this is all you know. Yeah. To a point. Yep. I, my first time on a bass boat, on an actual bass boat, was with Nathan Ragsdale last year in November, and uh, I won a giveaway that he was doing, and that's how I got out there. He's a good guy. Yeah, he is. He is um, a very good guy. Very knowledgeable guy. Just actually graduated uh, UGA. From UGA, and, yep. and is with Pure Fishing now. So. Yep. I saw that post that he put on, and congratulations to Nathan if you're listening. That's pretty cool. I'm, I'm happy for you. Um, that's a big thing. Yes, for a definitely. Guy. Um, so what is it? Cause let's be honest. I have no experience with kayak fishing. My experience with kayak fishing is we'll be out there fishing and we'll see these jokers. You guys stick to the bank, you know, and here they come. And, and we've never had a problem with one. So I'm, I'm definitely not going to discourage or nothing, but I've often sat there and wondered, okay, what is the appeal? Yeah. What is the appeal? You can't move around. And I know some guys love it. Yeah. Um, so I guess for somebody like me, who's never sat in one. Yeah. And I have not sat in a real fishing kayak. I've been in a wreck, but in a fishing kayak, you know, from the beginning, let's, let's talk about somebody that's a beginner. Maybe what's the appeal and how we can help that person succeed in a kayak? What is, how was it with you? I so guess. for me, when I got out there, um, being able to go to these smaller farm ponds and not have to fish from the bank, mm-hmm. that was an immediate, hey, I, I can get to that other side of the bank and fish an area that I normally can't fish. Right. I don't have to load around a John boat, anything like that. Um, but then also, there's parts of lakes that don't have a boat ramp that you can park on the side of the road, and you can just toss in the water right there. That is true, yep. And it beats paddling for hours to get to a spot. You pull up on the side of the road, drop in right there, and then you can fish that area for a while. Um, you can go to areas that, like, bass boats can't go. Uh, Etowah River is another spot that I like to fish. Mm-hmm. There's certain spots that a bass boat just 
they will not go up there. The water drops pretty low. You, you got, got a bunch of shoals, shoals and stuff. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. And I can pull up on shoals and get out and I can fish those areas. Um, and all in all, I mean, you can take it anywhere and go anywhere with them. Okay. So, so accessibility yep. is, is a big thing with that. Okay. So let's talk. You did mention don't buy a cheap yes. kayak. Okay. Uh, I have noticed here lately that some of these guys spend an awful lot of money. Mm-hmm. On kayaks. I mean, they're decked out like something else. I mean, they come in, they got 15 rods and two sonars and, and stuff. So I know, and I know the brands of the kayaks. So maybe let's start with that. What are some good brands of fishing kayaks that are out there uh, for somebody listening? You don't want them to buy cheap. Invest a little money. You know, a good entry-level company. So for me, depending on your style of fishing, mm-hmm. demo the kayaks out, of course. Uh, new Canoe, one brand. Uh, Bonafide, then you have Hobie. Mm-hmm. Those are the top three, in my opinion, as far as if you're going out there and you demo them, you try them out, and that's what you like, one of those three brands. Uh, the, the other good side of that is they're American-made. Okay, yeah, that's good. For me, that that's a big thing. Okay. Um, if you have a defect with a kayak, it stays local. You can go to your local dealer. You can get anything for it, get it fixed, or they'll swap it out, Whatever they whatever they need to do. Um, and you have a lot more dealer support versus buying from Cabela's or Academy. Right. And those are decent kayaks, but they're not your American-made and high quality. Um, you just don't have the dealer support there. That's my opinion. Um, now, what separates them? Like, I mean, let's just be honest. If we, if we get one of those that, you know, what are the perks of having that? Other than it being American-made, we understand that. But is it, I mean, just quality is built better? Is it com- more comfortable seating? What, what is it? it? It's a little bit of... Of both of those, um, so with New Canoe, any any time you have any issue with that kayak, they have lifetime replacement on any part on that kayak. Mm, so okay. and it's free. So if if the seat breaks, you shoot them a replacement order for them, and they'll return back with a brand new seat. You don't have to pay for it. You don't pay for shipping. They just send it to you. Um, they're one of the only kayak manufacturers out there that'll do that. If your handle breaks off, your if the hole cracks. And it, that, and that's not just for the first person who buys it. That's if you were to come and buy a kayak from me, and it was my kayak, you bought it, seat breaks, same thing. Oh, really? Lifetime. Lifetime. Does not matter. Um, and it's the lifetime of the kayak itself. That's pretty cool. Yep. That, that's a good thing. Uh, I did not realize that that was a situation that they could do stuff like that. So, yep. Um, what is a good entry size, I guess? I, I assume there's different sizes yep. uh, for these. So. For the typical person, if you were going to go out and buy one, they've demoed it. Just maybe what you were looking for. Um, for me, it was, I had a 10-foot for a little while, and it was limited space for what I was doing with the kayak tournaments, fishing out there a lot, spending 8 to 10 hours on, out on the water. You want to be comfortable. Right. So uh, you've got your 10-foot, you've got your 12-foot, and then you do have some 14-footers. And I think it's a matter of how tall you are and then also how much space you want around you mm-hmm. and what you want to have on your kayak. And that, that's what really kind of sets you apart on the sizes that you want or that even that you want to move around because some, some guys, they don't have a trailer. They'll put it in the back of their truck, right. and they don't want a 14-foot because there's nowhere to put it in the back of the truck unless they do some type of tailgate extensions to hold the kayak, but then they have to move it themselves. Okay. Um, so I think a lot of it falls on that too. You get some older guys that want some lighter kayaks. You've got some younger guys that want lighter kayaks. Um, I think it's just a matter of what they're comfortable with. Okay. But um, – start with a 10 foot or start with a 12 foot but i think the biggest part of that is once you demo it you'll find out real quick okay this works better for me than this right just getting on the water with it now you keep saying demoing Mm -hmm. okay where can somebody that's listening go demo a kayak um how does that happen so anybody that wants to demo like a new canoe kayak Mm -hmm. they can reach out to me and they can say hey i want to demo any of their models doesn't matter and i can put them on the water a lake i can put them on a river or they can go to Cedar Creek Outdoor Center. That's my local dealer. And they've actually got an indoor pool. Okay. So even All in the right. wintertime, if somebody wanted to demo one, take the kayak, toss it out on the pool, and then they can try it out. Okay, the so pool. they can actually get in it, feel it, see if it's right for them. Yep, exactly. Okay. Um, Westbrook Supply Company is another one that mm-hmm. has a lot of different models. They've got Native, um, Bonafide and a couple of the kayaks, but you can demo with them as well. Right. And it's just a matter of hitting up a team member and saying, hey, look, this is what I want to demo. Okay. Um, and then the dugout bait and tackle, they're a Hobie dealer. They've got a demo pond out in front, and they'll take a kayak and they'll drag it down, toss it in the water, and let them try it out. doesn't matter what model it is. So, okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So that's something because, you know, 
very hard to try out a boat. Yeah. Before, you know, before you buy it. So I think that's a pretty good thing. Uh, you know, all of those places that you've mentioned, we've heard in our circles, you know, the mm-hmm. dugout, Westbrook Supply, all that. Um, so that they seem, always seem like pretty good, helpful people Definitely. with all those places. So that's a good thing for everybody to know. Now, there's a difference between a guy that just wants to get a kayak and get on a pond and fish and a guy that wants to fish kayak tournaments. Because mm-hmm. you guys have gotten really serious in the kayak tournaments here recently. Yes. Uh, gotten to know a lot of you guys, and um, it's growing exponentially. It seems like it's just – and you don't just fish local ponds and local lakes. You guys are all over the southeast mm-hmm. doing this, so um, it's a pretty big thing. Now, what made you personally say, you know what, I want to I want, I want to do tournaments, and uh, we'll get into how we do those tournaments, but what drove you to you know want to do that? Um, so – very competitive person, and before I bought my kayak, I tried out um, the. I think it's um, it was one of the monthly tackle box, and they did monthly tournaments with their product in their box. Right. They do a tournament, and it was from the bank, so that's what I I was doing that, just trying it around. And um, when I got the kayak, a friend of mine mentioned, he's like, "Why don't you try try the tournament side?" So I fished my first tournament in February with a friend of mine. Neither one of us had ever fished kayak tournaments before right um we drove two and a half hours away stayed in a, a terrible hotel i've uh, been there josh and i have done that before <laughs> yeah that. yeah so that's its own story and podcast in and <laughs> exactly right there so yeah so um and we, we jumped into it the next morning 40 degree weather it was terrible but it was it was a lot of fun it was just something about it it was different um it allowed me to compete because i mean as you get older you Sports is not really there for most of us right. to compete in. And this was something I could compete in and that I just love to do. So it made sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, I like how you said that. The sports are not here for us older people. Yeah. It, they're here. We just can't do them <laughs> anymore like that. So I totally get that. Now, let's talk about a boat setup, mm-hmm. a kayak setup. So um, we're going we're gonna, to, in this podcast, we're going to kind of steer towards the tournament side. Yeah. Because uh, that's, you know, that's what a lot of the guys um, that we know do. And we find it really interesting uh, since we fish the electric only tournaments and we know a lot of guys that do the bass tournaments. So this kayak tournament thing, uh, the way it's exploded is really intriguing to us. You know, we, we want to learn a lot about it. Some of these things are set up, though, like I'm saying, they're like a small submarine that any time they could just go under the water. They got James Bond looking stuff <laughs> hanging off of them and all that. You can drop a pretty penny into a kayak. Yes. Yep. Um, not everybody can do that. Yeah. So... For the guy that you know doesn't want to do that or can't do that, let's talk about a good setup. Now we've already discussed maybe the length, mm-hmm. 10, 12 foot till you get comfortable. But how do you keep your stuff on there, your rod holders, you know, the basic stuff like that for somebody that wants to know? So for a guy just getting started, take a milk crate. I mean, something as simple as a milk crate. You can toss your like your Plano cases, your thirty seven hundred cases in there. Right. Um and I'm sure you guys have seen them, the little plastic rod tube holders. Yes. Most of the guys, I guess, who catfish, they use some of those. Take those and you can just zip tie it to that milk crate. Toss it on the back. And some of the people actually have bungee that they'll bungee it onto. Right. You can toss everything right there. You can take three rods with you just to get started, just to get out there on the water. And then, I mean, that that is your, your go-to if you're getting out on the water just to go. That's it. That's all you need. Take a milk crate and slap those rod holders on it, and you're ready to roll. Okay, and that's for your basic fisherman guy. Exactly. You, now, you have to have a couple other extra things to fish a tournament. Yes. And we'll get to, like, the rules and stuff like that. When you get into that level, that's a lot of stuff you can be carrying. I mean, there's a lot – I mean, is that – how do you do that? Because it doesn't seem like a milk crate would carry all of it. No, so uh, – Every kayak, with it being set up a little bit different, has different storage areas. So there on each is storage one. on them. Yep. Okay. Um, some guys store stuff under the seats. Some guys have it on the front hatch. Uh, some guys carry it. Uh, that rear section is big enough to carry what we call a black pack, and it's what they carry the Plano cases in, um, and it's by Yak Attack. Okay. Open it up. You can stick your your rods on the sides, and then you've got the Plano cases inside. But then in front of it, you've got extra area to store more stuff. Um, but as far as like your your track system, that's kind of where everybody mounts everything. Your your rod holders, your fish finders, the transducer mounts, 
your anchor wizard. Let's be honest, the GoPros. Everyone you guys got a GoPro. Exactly, your GoPro mounts. It's almost like it's a standard on a kayak. You got to have a GoPro. Yes. And if some of you guys got like multiple angles. Yes. Yep. You know, okay, I'm just I'm just pointing that out. You yep. know, you guys really <laughs> like the GoPros. Yeah. Uh, I think y'all might have got into the GoPro faster than you know a lot of the electric only guys and stuff like that because it just seems like you always got a picture. Yeah. Or something. Yep. So that that's pretty cool. Now, did you did you feel the need? To go out and buy all that stuff once you got in. I mean, to comp- once you got into tournaments, it was it was a slow step because, like you said, it's expensive. Yeah. Um, and if you like with anything, you buy cheap product. Yeah, I mean, it, that's just what it is. It's cheap. Um, so the more you spend money on some of the stuff, you're getting good quality. Um, and a lot of it is American made product, and I'm a firm believer in that. So Yak Attack is one of those that. I mean, when you buy it, I mean, they're out of Virginia, and right. when you buy it, it's quality product. It holds up. It's built for kayaks. It, that's what it's designed for. Um, you're not trying to take something cheap and just make it work. So, but as far as getting some of the stuff, it, it was it was a slow approach because it was expensive. Here and there, just items when I could. Right. Um, and then eventually, once you get comfortable with saying, hey, this is what I really like on the kayak, or hey, this is what I need versus this you kind of learn what does best for you. Similar to a bass boat, you get comfortable and then you may want to change something and see how it works and kind of go from there. Uh, one thing will work better than something else. So you'll take it off and you'll, you'll try something else out. Uh, it's just kind of a, every time you go out, you get to learn a little bit more right. and play with a little bit more. So I'm going to be honest. Let's talk about the seats. Yeah. Because my old butt would sit, if I sat that way for seven or eight hours, <laughs> I would need help to get up. Yeah. So yeah. I imagine seats got to be back support. You got to have, you got to spend the money there. Yeah. So if you, if you buy a quality kayak, it comes with a quality seat. Okay. Um, kayak cushion is a. You don't have them plastic Walmart fold out mm-hmm. seats like that? Okay. I just know. Right. No. So um, the metal frame, good support. Um, it's not like Velcro just falling apart right. as, as you get right. in it. So. Absolutely. Um, but then you've got the kayak cushions that you can toss on there and they just, they go on top of the seat and they work great. Okay. Um, as far as like comfort wise, most of the guys we stand up when we fish. So okay, okay. So you're standing up. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, because I've not seen too many of guys doing that while we're out, you know, uh, and about. So yep. that is a common thing. Then when you get in the tournaments, you guys yes. are standing up fishing. Yep. Okay. And just because of the better angle casting, I guess. So that means that these things got to be pretty sturdy. Yeah. If yep. you're standing up in them. Oh yeah, yeah, very sturdy. Okay, so that's different because, I, like I said, I haven't seen that. We did. Uh, Josh and I witnessed a fella at Hickory Log a couple weeks ago. We was fishing a tournament out there. Yeah. And uh, he's just sitting there, and he's fishing. He's he's right on top of some brush on the brush pile, bless his heart. And all of a sudden, next thing I know, he's in the water. <laughs> now, this guy wasn't standing up or nothing. He was just in the water. And the bad thing about it was – his feet were right down in that brush pile too, which I would not have oh, wanted to be into. No. But I felt bad for the fella, and we had a good laugh about it. I'm glad he went out in deep water. Yeah, but that guy was just sitting and he flipped. Yeah. Okay. So, do you think that might have been a, a cheaper kayak, or, or is it really hard to flip one of them things? I guess that's what I'm trying to get to. When when you buy a quality kayak, you got to try. Yeah, you got to try. Um, now. A lot of it's got to do with what you're doing as well. So, like, my kayaks have 360-degree seats on them. So, I can rotate all the way around, fish out the sides, out the back. But if you're if you're just sitting sideways on a kayak, yeah, yeah, it, it could happen. Or if you transition to one side or the other trying to get something. And that's where that cheap kayak, if, if you've got everything behind you and you try to reach back on a cheap kayak to right. get something, it's very possible that you could just tilt too much one way and go into the water well that's it and we weren't really paying much attention we were you know we were fishing there uh we weren't really paying that much attention to him but it was just like uh in a blink of an eye yep so with that being said let's talk about your flotation devices and Mm -hmm. how important that might be to the kayak guy uh do you like the kind that's already inflated or or do you wear the kind of inflates i wear the one that's already inflated Uh um i wear an nrs chinook okay and it's built for fishing so you've got ever you've got pockets there for you um that's the only thing about the inflatable one that i don't like is because you don't have the pockets on okay, most that, of them that right makes there sense. that's pretty so, good um is that a standard that you must have yes in, in a kayak tournament you've got to wear it if you're caught without it yeah if you're fishing without it you're disqualified that's a pretty good rule yep okay and i understand that too yep. um I don't think that fella had one on, but he, he was only fishing in three foot of water, and I, I doubt he was fishing in a tournament, but it was still 
it crossed my mind. Yeah. It, how quick that could have happened. Exactly. And that's that's one thing that a lot of guys don't think about. They'll get out on the water. Especially if it's cold, dude. If I it, mean. In, in 55, 60 degree weather or yeah. water, that's still cold if the outside temperature is 80. I yeah, mean, it is. It, it's cold. So, yeah. um, and most of your lakes right now in Georgia are still falling in that 60 to 65 range. Yep, yep. Um, early in the morning, it's colder. Right. But generally, by the time you need a, a life jacket, it's too late. I mean, yeah. you think about it. I mean, you, you're already yeah. in the water. and uh, I guess you could get hypothermia at those temperatures if, if you well maybe stayed in there longer. I'm not a doctor. I don't know. So More or less, you're about to go into shock. It, it just... You, you, you panic, like yeah, and you take a deep breath, and uh, you can get water in your lungs. A lot of things can happen, but uh, with a life jacket on, because if you do flip a kayak and the kayak hits you in the head, knocks you unconscious. Yeah, yeah, because they're pretty heavy. Some I of mean, them are the, pretty heavy. The, the yeah. nice, I mean, you know, you mm-hmm. get yeah, they're pretty heavy. Yep. Um, it was just something that crossed my mind because I, you know, I, I I watched this guy, and like I said, we had a good laugh. He was safe. Yeah. Um, but. A lot of potential there for a disaster, especially if you're by yourself. Yeah. And a lot of you guys fish by yourself. Mm-hmm. So uh, just something I noticed. I'm, I'm glad the guy's okay. Yeah. But just something to think about. So we've kind of we've kind of delved a little bit into, you know, the kayak. And I guess really the person has to go sit in them. It's mm-hmm. all personal features, what you want. If you want to put all this stuff into fish tournaments, you can. If not, you can just go out there, joyride. Um we're going to talk tournaments now because this, huh. this is what I'm really fascinated with because it's pretty big. But I want to touch on one thing before we get to the tournament thing, and that is etiquette with a kayak guy uh, and kayakers in general. I find that most kayak fishermen are, are, are very polite. Yep. We haven't ever had any problems with them. Uh, kayakers, on the other hand, that's a little different, you know, yes. like that. How does a kayak fisherman or angler feel when they come up and, and you've got a bass boat that sits – say 40 yards off of a point you guys generally i don't see you out in the middle too often you're very much bank oriented yep all right you want to kind of go through or or you know what's the rule do you i mean is there what do you do for me if i'm pulling up on a guy that's on a bass boat fishing a point right i'll go out back behind him as much as possible okay give him the water um my thought is he's covering a lot more water than i am i've got an area i want to fish but if someone's there I try to give them that right. They were there. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to roll up on them and just fish beside them. Um, I think the best thing to do is, hey, let them know, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna go behind you just to, to get out of your way and, right. and go further down. That way they know you're there. Most of the time, if they're not paying attention, they can't hear you. So you just need to let them know if you're close enough. Yeah, and I say that not because we've had any bad experiences. We haven't. But we've had a few come – you know, they kind of come up pretty close, and we're just kind of talking amongst ourselves like we don't know what he's doing. Yeah, yep. You know, and if he wants to go on through, fine, or, you know. Um, so I did not know if there's a universal kayak, Jeep wave or anything like that. I mean, you know, or just how you guys felt. That might not be the best way to say it. Just, how, you know, how do you feel? You want to work that, but they're there, but they're sitting way off. And I, I think it kind of crosses the same line with a bass boat, but I've had guys that – we didn't even go there to fish with who will literally pull up to us on a kayak to fish beside us. And it's, I, I was going there. That was my next thing. Yeah. Because we covered the bass boat guy and all that. I've noticed some of you kayak guys are like right on top of each other. Yep. Now I did not know if that was the camaraderie on purpose or if that's just, you guys are competing, you know, now Josh and I watched a group of about three or four. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been about a week or two ago. They fished, and it was like a 30 square foot. It seemed like they were all right there on top of each other. Yeah. Um, that's unusual for us. Yeah. You know, in, in the bass tournament fishing world, I guess, like that, you know, you just don't see that. So maybe expound on that a little bit. Is that common? Um, it, it depends on each fisher. Um, everybody's a little bit different. Yeah. Some guys that I fish with, they want to be on the other side of the lake, which is perfectly fine. Um, but then you've got other guys that, one, maybe they're new to kayak fishing right. and they want to see what you're doing or they've got questions and I'm okay with a guy being right there to, to ask questions or to learn or, Hey, what are you throwing? Or a lot of times we're switching out baits. Hey, try this out. Um, just to see what the fish are doing because we'll, we'll get up there and there'll be three or four of us and we'll all throw something different and say, okay, what's working. Right. Let's get on a bite. Um, even in a tournament this past weekend, we had a new guy fish with a fish with us and it was one, I wanted him to be involved, get, Get up there, see what we're doing. Make sure you know everything that's going on, um, because I, a lot of guys they don't ask those questions. Right. Hey, 
can I fish with you? Yeah. I mean, I mean it, it, it's a weird question sometimes for some people, but it's it's one of those. That, well, it's because you're basically solo fishing. Exactly. I mean, you're right. So. It, it's every man for himself. Um, but my thought is, is if you go out there by yourself and you're new, it, you, in a sense, you're almost scared because you don't know, one, where do you start? I mean, what do you do? And uh, same thing with, like, the etiquette. The etiquette. I mean, you just... They don't know. Right. right. So I, I think it's a good thing to go out with someone who does know and kind of show them a little bit. And I think that's one thing that may set the kayak, I, I guess, family apart from a lot of the other guys who fish is that most of the guys are very open about, hey, this is what I'm doing. Come out here, join us. Let us show you how to do it because it, it is different. You fall in the water real quick or catch yourself in the middle of the lake because you're drifting and don't even realize it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, uh, following the line of a bass boat. So I think there's a lot there, but I, I do fish close to some guys and then other guys, we just, we fish on two opposite sides of the bank and we'll work to a point where we get together and say, okay, Hey, this isn't working. Let's go somewhere else. Yeah, sure. So, and we'll just work two different areas. Perfect. Okay. Let's, let's talk the tournaments. Yeah. Okay. So let, let lot goes into one of these things. Yeah. All right. So this is what intrigues me. Uh, first thing, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start asking you questions. Okay. Maybe what's allowed, what's not allowed. Okay. Trolling motors. It, it's varied by each trail. So there's a couple of trails throughout Georgia. Some allow them, some do not. Um, and then you've got your national levels like KBF, uh, which is a lot – I mean, it's a, a larger platform nationwide, and they do allow motors. And then, uh, of course, you've got Bass Nation now. And that that's one of those that once again it varies from each trail. So, okay, I was just, I was just curious. Uh, are they all? Did they all allow electronics? I assume. Yes, they're all electronics. Um, the foot paddle things. I know some guys have those, and some guys have the oars or paddles. Are like you saying some people have the foot pedals? Yep. Is that allowed or not allowed? It's allowed in all of them. It's loud and all of them. What yep. do you have? Um, I've actually got the one that I, I fish out of majority of the time, the Frontier. I've got a pivot drive system on it, so it is a pedal drive, but I can use a paddle as well. Um, is there is that much easier? It, it's a lot easier because when I'm fishing, I can still move down the, the bank line or, or move around and still make cast. And for me, that's a huge thing. And I can pedal four miles an hour on that kayak, which isn't huge, but when you're paddling it, Two and a half miles an hour, it's a huge difference. It's a big difference. Do they limit the size of the motors? Um, so it, it's based off of the uh, the actual manufacturer of the kayak. Some of them may have some restrictions on size, but as far as trolling motor goes, doesn't matter. So do you ever have any of these guys stick an Elko or something like that on the back of one of these things? I'm being very serious. Well, I actually, I looked at the Elko, and the reason I looked at the Elko is because um, one of the podcasts you did on the Elko motor, right. you're talking about the electric only, and it's an outboard. Well, very few kayaks will accept an outboard, a new canoe is one of those that will accept an outboard. But are you serious? Yeah. So but the difference is is that the Elko is only a six point or it's a six point five horsepower, I believe. And on a new canoe, uh, the new canoes they'll only offer two point five horsepower. Oh, so okay. because of the transom. But that was one thing I did look like or look at because I think that Elko is twenty five hundred dollars. And if you buy a Torquedo, which is virtually, I mean, it's a trolling motor scent in, in a form of its own. Right. Um, it's two thousand dollars roughly. So looking at the comparison, it was like, hey, what what's the difference in right the weight and everything like that? See, I would have never thought that a kayak guy would ever think about an Elko. I, I mean, it it crossed your mind. It, right? was, it was because of the podcast. That the, was it. Them cats down in South Georgia got them <laughs> fifty horsepower Elkos or them electric motors on them boats, and they're they're on plane. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to see a kayak like that guy just <laughs> flying about thirty two miles an hour down the water, just waving at everybody as he goes by. So. Uh, but it is possible if they would make the transom. I, I guess so. I mean, if they would make a transom that's big enough for it, um, I don't know how safe it would be because I don't know how fast that 6.5 would go, but I'd imagine it'll move. I would imagine that's a 24-volt system too. So you'd yeah. have to have a couple batteries. Yeah. You'd, you'd have to have a larger a larger one of the kayaks to, to pull that off, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you definitely, with a different transom and all of that, but, um, I mean, we run, most of the guys run lithium batteries, so – you just run a lithium batteries in parallel for your 24 volt system and you're good to go. So. Right. And I, I kind of noticed you, you brought a couple props with you and one is a Dakota lithium power box. Yep. Now, uh, I'll make sure we get, we get that in the camera shot. Kind of small. Yep. Um, 12 volt. Yes. Okay. And what's that for? So this is strictly for my navigation lights, my 360 light. Okay. So you still got to have the lights. 
Um, so my, my biggest thought is, is fishing at nighttime. I want people to see me. So I've got the 360 light and I've got the navigation light. Is that required for, for most of these tournaments or anything like that? Um, or? a 360 light is okay. The navigation light is not, but as soon as you put it out, like a, um, according to state law for Georgia, once you put a trolling motor on, you need navigation lights. You need the stickers on the side too? Yep. It has to be registered. Really? Yep. Once you put the trolling motor on it. Yep. Or is that a link thing? So like if you got a 14 foot. So from reading the everything that Georgia states, if it's a sailboat, it's different sizes. Right. When it comes to a kayak, they make no clarifications about length. It's just as soon as you power it, you're required to register it with state. Ain't that something? Okay. Yep. And, and maybe somebody out there know you know may know more about that yep. than I do. That's just something that that crossed my mind. Now, do you power your your electronics with that, mm-hmm. or it, so it does your navigation lights, your three sixty light, three sixty lights, and the your fish finder, fish finder. Yep. And what kind of? I mean, I imagine good usage that that lasts you all day, or yeah, with yeah. Generally, you? I'll get fourteen to sixteen hours of this for my fish finder. Um, and I'm not, I'm not using my lights all day. It's right generally for the first couple hours. Right. Okay. And what was something like that run? Um, this right here, because lithiums are more expensive. So. They are. Um, this setup, you're looking at like $229 for this setup. Okay. Now, um, and what's special about that setup? For me, the biggest reason I look at it is one Dakota lithium. They've got an 11 year warranty on the product. 11. 11 years on their batteries. Okay. So most of the lithium battery pod, uh, product, they don't offer that warranty, but then two with a lead acid battery or the deep cycle batteries, mm-hmm. you don't get that warranty. Um, this box is kind of set up where... You've got your phone charger if you need to use it. You, you've got the 12-volt um, outlet power there. Um, and then you've got the accessory right here, your 12-volt your and ground for that. Um, and then you've got lights. This, is, this kit is kind of – it's set up for if you're going out and let's say you want to stay on the river just overnight. You take this with you. You can charge your phones, do what you need to. It's got the lights on the front of it. You can use it at, when you get back to campsite. There's just a lot more versatility with it. Okay. So, um, that's not a bad deal then. If no. you can do all that. Yeah. And it, like I said, $229. Um, and I know a lot of people are looking at it as like, yeah, that's expensive. But if you buy just a standard lead acid battery, and let's say you spend 20, 30 bucks on it, you get two years out of it, maybe depending on what it is, turn around, buy another one. I mean, you, it's just a domino effect. Right. So now what's that way compared to a, a lead acid battery um less than half the weight less than half and i guess on yep. a kayak that's very important yeah so i run a, a trolling motor on one of my kayaks and it has a 54 amp hour dakota lithium battery as well that battery it weighs right at 16 pounds 16 16 pounds okay that's pretty good because everybody i've ever picked up in my life weighs like 50 it seems like exactly i always said if a man could invent a light battery he'd be a billionaire or whatever so i guess they're well on their way with the lithium and stuff like yes that. and life same life cycle i mean you know extended war- run yeah it's that. got 11 year warranty on it as well that's pretty awesome okay and that just sits you can set that thing right there in a compartment or in the- yeah yeah i set this in my front hatch and i've got it wired um yak power makes an amazing switch pack that you mount on your kayak this plug plugs directly to it, sends power to it. And then that eight way by Yak Power, just you can send power to eight different items that you want and control it all right there at your seat or through your phone. Good Lord, y'all got like more sophisticated stuff on a kayak than we got on our <laughs> boat. All right, so that's pretty cool. So we're in a tournament. We, we've got a power now, mm-hmm. and we've kind of discussed the propulsion and stuff like that. Um, one of the things I find interesting is the way you guys weigh fish. Yep. And you don't really weigh them. No. Nope. We measure. Yep. Okay. So pros and cons against that. Because some guys are like in the electric only world, you know, the boat world. There's something about coming up to that weigh scale. Yes. You know, with your bag of fish. Now, you guys don't get that. No. Now, do you, I mean, is that something that, you know, I guess you live without it because you do it. But yeah. to me, that to me, just that's more fun to, to bring those fish. Now, as far as fish health, maybe not. You know, I understand yeah. that. But what do you guys do to kind of keep the drama involved in, you know? So most of the time, like you said, you don't get that feeling. I've, I've never never been through that experience to say, hey, look, I've got to have that. And so most, you don't know it. So you I don't know yeah. it. Um, watching it on Bassmaster Classic, that was 
that was where I seen it at. Right. Um, and, and they created that for us. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, drama. It is. Yeah. yeah. So um, for us, it, it's a matter of some guys, they will, because you don't, you don't submit your fish until like some of these tournaments until the very end of the day. So you have no idea what everybody else is catching at oh, okay. all. Okay. All right. So there is some drama in there. Yeah. And then you've got some other tournaments, uh, like the one this past weekend, they used Tourney X. That's what I was going to say. Cause I actually watched you guys and you yep. can kind of keep up with who was, who was where and all that. So that's available to all of y'all. Yep. As you're on the water. Yep. And that that's certain tournament trails will actually use Tourney X. Uh-huh. Others will not. That's just, it's a preference from some of the directors from different, different series. Okay. Um, but even then, a lot of guys in the app, you've got a live well. So you can drop these fish in the live well and it automatically coals your smallest fish after you've hit your five fish limit. So, or three fish, whichever tournament it is. And then at the end of the day, guys will drop in all five of their fish at the last minute. And if you were sitting in first place, now you may be sitting in fifth. Okay. So I'm that's like, that's a little bit better. At least you got yeah, a little drama. Exactly. You got a fake live well. Yep. You know, but, but the guy doesn't he's not required to submit. Exactly. That that's crazy to me. Yeah. I mean, now let me ask you something. This past weekend you mentioned the tournament you were fishing. How many times did you find yourself looking? Never. Okay, all right. So no. you got to be different because I wouldn't be that way. Yeah. So when I first started fishing these tournaments, and I was looking at some of those, it was like, man, you just it it kind of sets you back, and you're like, you get frustrated because you don't know what you're doing different or what you're doing wrong, or you're just not on the fish. I mean, any of those things. But when you look at it, for me, it was like you're automatically it's like looking at a scoreboard halfway through and it's 50 to two i mean it's just yeah, i've been there yeah i mean <laughs> you're right it's Absolutely. no fun so right so you prefer the drama and not knowing to yep. right there at the end um i wish i had that ability <laughs> i you know josh has fished a couple of the the hammonds weekday tournaments yep and i find myself watching I'm, I'll be at work, you know, and I probably should be working and I'm watching Josh and you know, just to see how well they're doing. And, you know, send him a text like, dude, you got, you got to step it up you yeah. know, a little bit. Probably don't help him to get that text. Cause yeah. I, you know, he's trying to fish. Yeah. Um, but that seems to be, I kind of like that scoreboard. Mm-hmm. That's just my personality. I like to see, yeah. I mean, we're getting, we're getting whipped. Yeah. Uh, so it's a motivator to it, some, it, to some, and I, I can see where it would work against you in others. So, yep. um, Specific rules on how you measure your fish. I've noticed that. And is that pretty much standard through the all the tournaments, or do they all have their little quirks? Kind of explain that. Um, for the most part, it's it's pretty cut and dry across it. Um, you've either got to use a hog trough, which is one type of measuring board. Uh, the catch board is the one that I brought here tonight. That's another style. We'll get a picture of that here in a little bit. Yeah, we'll. we'll and then um, some people use, a, I think they call it a fish stick, and it like it folds out. But those are your three major ones that everybody, for the most part, accepts. Okay. Um, Seems like the fish are always facing to the left. Yep. Fish has to face to the left, and um, the mouth has to be closed. Has it's, to be closed. Okay. Has to be closed. They take deductions off for mouth for mouth open. And what's the deduction? Um, Just a standard deduction. Quarter inch for oh, mouth open. Oh, that's right, because I'm thinking pounds. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how many pounds do you get ready to lose? You lose a quarter inch. Yeah, and it's a uh, quarter inch on everything, I believe, under 18 inches. As soon as you go over 18 inches, it's half an inch. Okay, so if it's a big fish, they penalize you. Yep, exactly. Okay. Um, They want to be able to see the eyes uh, of the fish, make sure the fish is alive for the most part. Right. Um, Not covering the mouth so they can see it. They don't want you to cover the tail. So that, now, can you take that tail and can you pinch it? Some of the some of the actual trails will allow you to pinch the tail. Okay. Others will not. They don't want you to to pinch it. They want you to toss it on the board, leave it on the board, and let it be. So um, it just depends. You have to, when, when you're fishing a tournament trail, you have to read the guidelines because each ones have different guidelines, and you need to, to read each guideline. You don't need to just think that they're all the same. Right. You need to take the time and read the guidelines. Okay, well, let's be honest. You, gotta, you, you throw an eight-pound bass yeah. on that scale. You can't cover the mouth. You can't cover the eyes. You can't pinch the tail. You got to have your camera out. You got to take a picture of that joker. Yep. And the fish has to cooperate the entire time while you're doing it. <laughs> yeah. That's not the easiest thing in the world if you get – well, and I'll be honest, I mean, it could be a 12-inch fish. That joker's just, you know – Sometimes those are the worst. Yeah, <laughs> just bouncing all over. Yeah. Big mama's just going to lay there for you, and that little one's just going crazy. So, yeah, yep. Um, that's not the easiest thing in the world. Now you're doing it in a kayak, you know, sitting down Yep. and all that. So, so uh, advice-wise, when you have your catch board, you catch a fish, take your board and dip in the water. And okay. what that does is – versus – 
I mean, sitting in the sun and it being dry, yes. when you lay the fish on it, the fish freaks out. Uh, you get it wet, that kind of helps it. Um, wet your hand as well. When you place your hand on the fish, it just kind of helps it. Uh, what I'll do is I'll actually, I've got the fish grips, and I'll put the fish on the fish grips and set it in the water while I get everything set and ready to go. And it kind of gives them a time to to relax. Right. And that that's just... Just like, what in the world just happened to me? All right, here we go. All exactly. Right. Um, so I'll, I'll get the board ready. I'll get the identifier ready. And then I will actually make sure to get my phone ready, make sure that it's on, whether it be through the app or just taking a picture, just make sure everything is ready. Okay, so you not listen, you just put a pretty good list together of things you got to do to take a picture of a fish. Yes. Yep. That's what I'm saying. It's not the easiest thing in the world. No, no. And uh, the net, that is probably the biggest thing that I've learned. Okay. You take that net and you put it, on the opposite side of this net or right right next to the fish's head on the outside of the kayak. Because when that fish flops, he's generally going that way. He's going headway. He's going headway. And when he flops, if you've got your net there, he just lands right in the net. There you go. There's your fish north Georgia <laughs> tip of the week right there. How many times does that happen to you? A lot. And so is this something you learned by experience? Um, it was another gentleman who passed the information to me. He's like, look, this will this is something, just try it out. He said, I know it's, it's a pain because it, it's hard to maneuver a net on top of everything else you're doing. Yeah, I know. You got a 32 point checklist. You got to do the exactly. <laughs> to measure a 12 inch fish. <laughs> exactly. But, um, but that is pretty cool to think about it. And I'm going to pay attention to that. You know, not that we're going to lay one down, but just, yeah, I'll just pay attention to see if they kind of jump headway like that. So that's a pretty good advice. Now, do, can you, this is something else that, and I asked Josh this and we never got any clarification um, from the Hammonds thing. I'd like to find out with them too, but is there a minimum length fish that you can weigh as long as it is within? So they, the, you know, since you're doing, you're not keeping it. Yep. So can you weigh in? I mean, can you measure an eight inch, eight inch fish? It depends on the tournament. Okay. And so some of them have guidelines for eight inches. Some have 10 for the majority. It's, it's 12 inch minimum. Okay. Um, and I think it, it depends on the water and kind of what the guys think that's going to happen because they may say, Hey, look, the bite has been terrible. For the last three, four weeks, we know we're fixing to go in there and it's going to be rough. We'll allow an eight-inch minimum. What that does is it just allows more guys to get more fish on the board. Okay. And and that's kind of, why, that's kind of you know, they have the app that they're using, the digital, something similar yep. to what you guys are using. So the fish never hits the live well. Yep. So technically, can you weigh, a you know, yeah. an 11-inch fish on Lake Lanier that, you know, if you were keeping it in live well, would it be about 14 inches? Is that what it is, normally 14? 14 inch. Yeah. Uh, I fished one with Nathan uh, the day that Josh fished. and Yeah, uh, maybe you know the rules. So, I mean, that was, you guys weigh any short fish? No. We, every I fish, don't want to hear that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's because that he's was, fishing with Nathan. Well, I, more, honestly, whenever I fished with him, caught a fish, we go to take the weight on it, and he's like, you got to measure it first. And I'm like... Okay, so I'm, he so he measured. Yeah, he measured. He made sure that we measured. And that was something that I did not know because um, I read through the guidelines, but I didn't see that minimum. And I may have missed it, but I didn't see that 14-inch on there. And that might have just been him just as habit as 14 on Lanier. We're going to go with that anyway. So y'all had a pretty good bag that day, so it didn't matter. Yeah, yeah it wasn't bad. I mean, we, we, yeah. we caught some fish. So I was just curious at how that would work. So you can, depending on the tournament mm -hmm. that you guys fish, what are uh, – I say weigh in. It's to, score. You know, score. Is that what it is in yep. kayak? Score an eight inch fish. Yep. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Maybe tell everybody a little bit. Now, you, what tournament trails do you fish? Um, as many as my wife allows. Um, okay, that's a good answer because that's pretty much <laughs> whatever the boss lets me do. Yes. Um, okay. last year I I fished a lot of different tournament trails because I wanted to learn it and I wanted to meet some of the guys that were doing it. Um. And the KBF was one of those that I wanted to fish. Now what's KBF stand for? Kayak bass fishing. Kayak bass fishing. Okay. Yep. Um, Chad, that's Chad Hoover's. I would say that's his baby. That's that's something that he really um, does a, a really well job of. And taking is this out, of. is this out of Georgia? Um, no, it's. Um, I, I guess technically it's out of Tennessee. Okay. So. Um, so it's a regional. Mm. It's a regional trail. Yep. Well, it, it's actually, it's nationwide. So he does a nationwide trail. Oh, okay. So he does a monthly online for every single state and it, it's based off of hey georgia this is your month you've got 21 days from the very first day until the 21st day of the month you can fish any public pond from a kayak and you've got to follow the same guidelines like you were in a regular tournament your when you take the photo your location has to be on to make sure that you're taking it on public water 
and then you submit it, and they've got judges throughout the month that that actually look through your fish and score your fish, and make sure that they're accepted or denied. Um, and he does that. Now, now what will get a fish denied? Um, I other mean, than location, location, um, the more or less no identifier in the picture. Um, and you know what? Let, let's stop right here for a second because I, I you've said identifier two or three times. Yep. And I know what it is, but maybe somebody out there that's listening does not know. And I should probably should ask that earlier. What is an identifier, and why is it important? It's just the code that they give either an individual, depending on the tournament, or they'll they'll give a group. Hey, this is your code for today. Okay. Um, and it's generally four digit, three or four digit, um, and it's something you have to either put on your hand or put on a card. With KBF, they recommend hey you put it on your card. That way, it's on our KBF identifier. We know that it's our tournament. We know that it's our code, and we know it's you that's fishing it. And what's important about this code? Um, it it just identifies for that tournament for that month. Okay. Or and, that day. And you have to do what with it? How do you how do you show? You it? have to display it in the picture whenever you're taking a picture of the fish. So okay. It, so you got all these eight hundred things you got to do. Yep. And now you got to get an identifier card right beside it. Yep. And so I kind of find that impressive because I see the pictures all the time. I wanted people to understand what an identifier was, but you don't think what all goes into now. Every time I see when you guys post a picture on Facebook. Yeah, I'm gonna think of the 32 step process it took. There went 10 minutes. There went 10 <laughs> minutes, and I'm gonna make sure that that net. I'm gonna see how many guys keep that net on the head side to the left. So yep. that's pretty interesting, like that. So okay, so this guy has an identifier mm-hmm. for the entire month for certain ones. For yep. certain ones. So this is that 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 KBF. The KBF monthly. Yep. Okay, and so you so let's say when Georgia's. You know, I guess do you, you just fish all. I mean, are there hours you can fish? Or you just fish all day. You can, it, it's it's more or less. Uh, it's still again, your top five fish. Yeah, it's still your top five okay, fish right. for the entire month. Um, it auto coals whenever you put the fish on the leaderboard. If you catch a bigger fish, um, it'll auto coal for it for your five fish. And then at the end of the month, you you're competing against how many ever anglers are in Georgia that registered for it. Um, Can anybody register for it? Anybody who wants to register for it, as long as they are a KBF um, member. You gotta, okay, you got to join it. Have right. to be a KBF member. That's fine. Um, and they, they've got different tiers depending on what you want to fish and so they got like that. So they got slow for guys like me, <laughs> and they got experts for guys that know what they're doing like that. So, they, But seriously, they got like a rookie league or kind of well, like that? or It's based off of what competitions that you want to fish in. So they've got – they do a southeastern – region mm-hmm. and what they do is they have generally three to five tournaments i think this year it was scheduled to be five tournaments and it was actually the southeast so it was five different tournaments throughout the southeast and you had to be a, a competitive member for kbf to fish any of those tournaments okay um now if i remember correctly you do not have to be a, a member or a kbf uh, competitive member to fish just on the monthly but if you're going to do the southeastern regionals that's where that comes into play Okay. Um, and then those tournaments are, those are live events, one day events. And it, like there was supposed to be one in, um, I believe it was May, I believe, uh-huh. uh, for Lake Lanier and they were doing a KBF. So that was one of those that everybody would show up from uh, virtually anywhere. I mean, anybody who wanted to fish it all across the nation. I mean, if somebody from California wanted to fish Lake Lanier. You get 5,000 kayaks on Lake Lanier and they're all fishing one tournament. Yeah. I mean, it just it I mean, depends. Which on the seems side. like a typical day, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, really no does. different, <clears throat> right? Yeah, yeah. I, I should have thought about that before I said that. You know, that's every day. So, like last year, we had one on in Lake Lanier, and I think it was in June, uh-huh. and I think there was sixty four guys that right. fished it. Um, but then there was tournaments that we did at Gunnersville last year, and I want to say there was one hundred and sixty two kayakers. Now, when you pull up to Gunnersville, because mm-hmm. that's one thing, and I was going to bring it up, but let's just go ahead and talk about it. You're traveling; you guys travel all over. I know you fish in Alabama, Tennessee. You know, I see this on, on, on a lot of the various trails that that you know I, I follow on Facebook. Yeah, you know, follow all the guys, and you say Gunnersville. Yep. Okay, so you show up at a particular ramp. Like Little Hall here on Lake Lanier, does everybody start in the same spot? Or do you basically just go to any part of the lake and at 7 o'clock, let's go? Yep. So pretty much when – So is that an honor system kind of thing too? It is. It's very much an honor system. Um, it has to be a public ramp. It, it cannot be your your mom's boat ramp out right. there on the lake uh, or a friend you know. It has to be a public ramp. So you uh, – now, 
Seven o'clock. Uh, so is that what's the normal time? I mean, how do you do that? You get this? Can you go to your spot? You just can't fish. No lines in the water till. Yep. Most a certain time. Yeah, most of your tournaments will be. Hey, you can put in at six. Lines in at six thirty. Okay. So they they give you thirty minutes. Some less. Some will say, Hey, tournament starts at seven. You can be on the water at seven. You can fish at seven, and they give you no time to get anywhere. Okay. But once again, that depends on the trail. So you kind of you guys don't get to enjoy the blast off either. No, not really. Because that would be like an electric only <laughs> blast off. Where you got one guy with the Elko going twenty miles an hour, but the rest of us are putting it, you know, it, four miles yep. an hour and all that. So <laughs> we're jealous of the guy that can hit six. Yes, you know, yep. I, I wish I had that money to buy those trolling <laughs> motors like that. So, okay, so, but that is an honor system. So if because you know, no cameras, no nothing. Yep, there's only a few lakes like like Hickory Log where everybody puts in at six o'clock at the only ramp they have, and then you take off. I mean, there there are those okay, lakes. Okay, let me ask fish. you something. Let's describe a, a a kayak takeoff. Is there any bumping of boats or anything? I mean, let's be honest. I mean, no, not not that I've seen. I uh, was hoping there was. <laughs> you guys are nice or something like that. Uh, no, we just we generally just try to get in the water and kind of spread out, right away from everybody. But, listen, so. Hickory Log is kind of thin going through that channel right there. It, it is. So if you're the guy that wants to go all the way to the other side of the culvert over there, yep. Now that's a paddle too. Yes. So that takes a you know that takes a little bit of effort. Yeah, yeah. Um, on a kayak tournament like at Hickory Log, do you have to be? Ba- well, I don't guess it matters since you're not weighing in. Just at three o'clock, it doesn't matter where you're at. It's over. Can't weigh no more fish in. Um, it it depends on the trail. We've got some guys that say, "Hey, look, you have to be at the boat ramp at three o'clock." Okay. And you have to be what we call a weigh in. I don't know why they call it a weigh in, but that's they go there and you guys are some strange cats, you right? Know? Yeah. <laughs> It makes, but they'll they'll do a weigh in and and you, you a meet virtual weigh in out of your virtual live well. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like That's okay. So they'll they'll post up the um, the numbers and they'll get numbers from everybody and they'll look at the fish and check the fish, make sure that everything's there, the identifier, mouth closed, all that good stuff, and score your fish at some of these. And you'll meet up to see okay who had at that who had the best numbers then. Okay. Um, so you you do have some of those tournaments, but then you have one like at um, Wyatt's this past weekend. Your last and that was fish. was real crazy. Yep, those were real crazy. Okay, that's some of them guys. Yeah, some of them guys. I know some of them guys. And, yep. Uh, and is that one that you fish in a lot of, or just occasionally? Yep, I, I try to fish every one of those. Every one of those. Okay. Yep. Um, definitely know some of the guys like Aaron Wilson and Andy Middleton and all that fish. That you guys all went to Weiss. Yep. Now, was that tournament all real crazy members? Because that was the one I followed on the scoreboard, and I noticed under some of the things it was Georgia. Alabama. It said where the guys were from. Yeah, yeah. So was that an open tournament where all those guys' members are real crazy? It, it's an open tournament, really. Okay. So if anybody wants to fish it, they fill out the waiver, send their money in, they can fish it. So okay. it doesn't matter where they're from, Tennessee, Alabama. So you're saying that I could get a kayak next time I'm real crazy. I just join real crazy, sign a waiver, and I can fish it. Yep, exactly. I've got an extra kayak. You got an extra? I might try it one of these yep. days. I, I don't trust myself. I'd have a heart attack about 15 minutes in. I'd be able to just float on the water. <laughs> yeah, I'm not in any shape to get in a kayak, but maybe uh, the wind will drift me down the yeah, bank. We'll, you know? we'll get you a tarp just to, to stick up like a just keep, like just a keep, sail. Keep the, sun, keep the sun off of me. That's all I ask. Keep the sun off of me. I might try that one time, though, because it sounds pretty fun. But, again, Lake Weiss. Yeah. I mean, do you go pre-fish it? Do you just show up? Some guys pre-fish. It depends on if you can get out there and pre-fish it or if you want to pre-fish. I feel like every time I pre-fish, when I go out to fish, I do terrible. So I just I just choose not to pre-fish some of these lakes. Give me give me some lakes that, that real crazy fishes this year. Um, So we had Rocky PFA yeah. back in February. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. Yeah. Um, and then you had... I bet that was a cold tournament. Yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah, it was cold. Yeah, Rocky's cold up there. Yeah. Now, no. what 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 did it take to win that? Um, because you're getting ready to throw inches out at me, and I'm yeah, like, yeah, I I can't remember, but I want to say it was somewhere in the seventies, I think, low seventies. So we're talking five fish, three fish. It was it was five fish limit, five fish limit, yep. so seventy something inches. Yep. Okay. And but if you go to Gunnersville uh, summertime, I mean, I think last year it took 114 inches or something like that Good to win. Lord. Yeah. So there's huge spread. Okay, so you guys went to Rocky. I guess did you go to Gunnersville this year? Or are you going there this year? Um, we had one scheduled in Gunnersville in April. Yeah, got um, canceled all the other stuff. Well, actually, a lot of the guys they actually they did the tournament. They fished it, um, but the meetup, of course, was you couldn't have a meetup. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and then you had Lake Weiss this past weekend, and I think the the next one is Brushy Branch. And are um, you doing that in the summertime? It's 
It's in May. Or no, I'm sorry, it's in June. That's so. a, that can be a pretty tough place. You ever fish that? Yes, I have. Yep. Have, have you done well there? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> there's, there's two stories about Brushy that and I've only fished it one time. And yeah. it was last year and Josh couldn't fish with me. For some reason, he couldn't, and I show up, and we're there, and I'm seeing the water break, and I'm waiting for the us to drop the flag so we can go, and I'm, I'm seeing ripples everywhere, and I'm not familiar with it, and all the guys take off, yeah. and I'm like, well, fools, you know, the fish are right here, so I'm fishing, <laughs> and the sun finally come up, and I'm fishing in a foot and a half of water, you know, <laughs> I don't know what it was I was throwing at, but it, and then I went all the way out and got stuck in the river, and my phone changed time zones. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I missed the weigh-in. Oh, in fact, cost Josh and I the uh, <laughs> uh, basically would have been an automatic bid to the uh, to, to our it. championship. Yeah, you know, and then we had to qualify back. We had to back in a certain way, but that was not a good experience when we were brushy. Yeah, yeah, I'd say not. That, on Weiss, I had the same issue. My time changed on my phone. From it went from one one eleven right. caught a fish. Right, I submitted it. Well, I paddled like. 20 feet over to the next dock and it says 222 and i'm like <laughs> yeah hold on a second yeah i just scored a fish that shouldn't have been scored because of the time right but the app allowed it i was like something doesn't make sense right and then the time changed back <laughs> <laughs> i was sitting there thinking all i had to do this is this is honest truth i had to catch one fish if we'd have caught one fish it basically was guarantee guaranteeing us into our you know championship, championship. i caught one fish well, I caught that one fish about 45, you know, I, I'm, I'm just, guy called me up and he goes, where you at? And I said, well, I'm fishing in this cove about, you know, 100 yards up from the boat ramp. He goes, uh, why ain't you wait in? I'm, well, we still got another 30 minutes. I said, no, you don't. We wait in 30 minutes ago. So, um, oh man, that's I, terrible. Listen, it's just something that happens to people. Yeah. But yeah. I had to call Josh and explain that. Oh, that, that'd have been a rough one. Luckily, he's nicer than most, you know. Yeah. So that was, I did not have a very good brushy branch experience. So. I'm, I'm sure he can just leave that there to harass you about that. He can't, but we're going back there this year. If uh -huh. yeah, so we, I've got a chance to redeem myself. Gotcha. You got any tips on brushy branch? No. Well, there you go. Thanks a lot. You're not very helpful <laughs> no. right there. Um, I'll fish it and let you know. When is your tournament? <laughs> I don't even have no idea. when. It's probably going to be hot as heck. Yeah. You know, like it was last year. It was yep. terrible. Just brutal out there. Um, but Try was, sitting in a plastic boat. Well, that, let's think about, I mean, think about that. You guys, I'm not even going to bring sunscreen up and all like that, but I mean. Oh, I use it. I bet you do. Oh, yeah. I yeah. bet that thing's probably greasier than, <laughs> you know, <laughs> by the time you guys get done with it. But that is true. You have no escape. No, no. Other than getting on a bank and getting out of the water. Which makes sense now why some of you guys are sticking to the bank sometimes. Like that. Yes. I bet it does get hot. Oh, it does. And it, it it was one of those, the first couple times I went out there, I didn't think about sunscreen. I was like, yeah, I'll be out there a few hours. <laughs> you can <put> strawberry <laughs> legs and stuff like that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I so, won't make fun of you guys in as you come by and you got the gloves and the hat and the, the nose piece and the legs and yeah. like looking like, I'm like, dude, it's like July and you like it's out there. It's December. Yeah. I, I, wear, I haven't considered that. Yeah. So I still wear shorts. I, I can't wear pants. I hate it. So yeah, I couldn't either. And out on the water just seems like it'd be worse. I mean, wet with pants on. It just sounds miserable. I've never ever seen a guy that could fish in the summertime in blue jeans. Uh -uh. But I see it all the time. I'm like, you got to be hot. Yeah. So, okay. So we went down a different rabbit hole right there, <laughs> which is fine. Uh, sunscreen's important for kayak guys. You yeah. guys make sure you wear it. You got a particular, you know, PDF or whatever that stuff is. <laughs> What's how, how do they score that stuff? I don't wear it. Uh, no idea. You no idea? I just grab a can because it looks good. <laughs> okay, so, so. No, so you're not sponsored by any sunscreen people or anything nope, like that? Nope, okay, nope. all right. Well, we just thought we'd ask. Uh, Brushy Branch, what's some other lakes? Um, so let's see here. Etowah River is our, our final one. Now, see, that seems to be pretty cool. Yeah. That's a pretty cool thing with like that. So I would imagine you guys are going to be putting in several different ramps mm -hmm. again, stuff like that. So. Uh, any particular part of the Etowah you like better than another? Because we don't get to cover the rivers here in Georgia as much as we probably should. Um, there, there's a lot of good spots on the Etowah. It, it just depends on what you want to do. Because we're, we're hitting spots still, kind of largemouth, or what, both. Where are we going? Both, okay. Both spots in largemouth. Uh, they're going to sit kind of in the same areas, but just depending on certain structure in the water and things like that. The, the, of course, water slowing down, the largemouth will sit a lot better in those areas. Right. Um, you do have what I consider and what some other guys consider dead spots in Etowah where the water is just extremely slow and there's just not a lot of bass there because the water temperature gets a lot warmer. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so you're um, trying to find some current. Yeah, yeah I, I like some current with a with a good break in it. Um, but 
it, it depends if you want to paddle upstream up the river, you can do it. It just depends on if you want to. And then you've got other guys that just strictly want to float down. Now, how far are we talking between Rome and say that, you know, coming out of Alatoona? And I Ooh. imagine that's the stretch we're talking. Yeah. That, or, well, that's the one I focus on. That's the one. Now, can guys fish from, say, here in Dawson County, Etowah River down to Alatoona if it's on the Etowah? If it's on the Etowah, it depends on the restrictions because we are given restrictions of, hey, you can fish from here to here. Okay. At certain points. Um, but I think a lot of it is just depend on what you're comfortable fishing with right. in those areas. But as long as you're on the Etowah, I, I believe like Rome, where it shifts into the Coosa is the cutoff right there. That's right the place you can go down. Right there in Rome. <clears throat> yep. Downtown. Okay. All right. So is that that's where you end up this year? That's the last tournament at Etowah? Yep. That's, a, that's our final tournament. And that's with Real Crazy. Yep. And then you'll jump into some other ones here and there? Yep. Yep. Okay. So... What's your best finish in one of these things? Um, and I'm not – I mean, seriously, because I that's some, you got some really good guys. I was getting ready to bring up, like, Clint Henderson. Yeah. Yep. That joker is known. He's one of the – I mean, he's known. Yeah. Uh, he's kind of like the Chris Gaten in our electric-only trails. If yeah. Clint Henderson shows up, he seems to be like the man to beat in a lot of these things. Yep. Uh, Shane Young is another one. Uh-huh. And um, it – And I think it depends on the lake. Some of the guys just focus more on the lake and it, on certain lakes, and they, they're – they're good at them. I bet Clint's really good on Rocky. I I would uh, imagine with some of these pictures that he's posted. Yeah, he's I've seen good, him. You've so. been seeing <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> now, now, does uh, Jensen fish in any of these? I think he's fished in a couple in the KBFs, but most of your trails, um, he, he doesn't fish in a lot of those. So now, now, what about these big? Now you guys got big this year with that, or well, it would have been given you know with the virus probably kind of messed some things up. But like FLW bass, mm-hmm. that kind of I mean. We're talking the big, yeah, the big things like that. So, have you considered trying to do that, or is that something you got to qualify for? So, you you can actually fish for any of them. Uh, you have to, of course, the the fees from going from a local tournament that's thirty to fifty dollars goes right. up to two hundred fifty dollars, and it depends if you want to step off into that. Um, my plan is to fish a bass series tournament this year. Um, just depends, of course, with COVID, but. Right. That's one of those that I've always wanted to fish a tournament like that. That's just to me. Just for the experience. Just the experience. Um, Yeah, I'd love to win, but at the same time, it's one of those that it's just the experience. Uh, Some of the guys that we fish with, they actually drove out to Texas and fished a lake out there. And they got out there a couple days early. They pre-fished it. And one of the guys from um, Augusta took second place going out to Texas and fishing other people's home lake out in Texas. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And, Good for uh, the Georgia boy. Yeah. And uh, that that's one of those that, I mean. I, but I, the Texas guy could just as soon drive out here and whoop you on the near or something. Exactly. Like that. Um, that That's one of those that just depends on if you want to take that chance and drive out there and spend. Some guys will go out a week early, two weeks early, and fish a lake for a week or two, pre-fishing it. They take fishing. that serious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Take it very serious. Hardest thing to do in a kayak. Mm. Uh, I I don't know the hardest thing. Hardest thing. I mean, what's the thing that was the hardest to get used to then? I mean, because you kind of mentioned, and I'll say this: we were talking about a product, and you were talking about having to reel it back. It was coming out of the water oh, yes. soon yep. because of having to hold the rod higher when you were sitting down, rod angles and stuff like that. Yep. So, what was maybe some things like that that are a little bit different to kayak than opposed to a boat? Yeah. So, uh, fishing a spook for me. That was huge difference from like standing up on a bank where you've got a good angle and you can work a spook fairly good, and then getting in a kayak. If you're sitting down, I mean, you can work it, but not really um, that well. Some people work it better sitting down than they do standing up. I'm short. You put a seven foot rod in my hand, that tip's going in the water. It, right, it, it yeah, just is. It just is. Yeah. And, and I'm wondering. Uh, I don't know if if Joshua hears it, but if you hear that little cricket. You're hearing that cricket. We're picking up a, a really loud <laughs> cricket tonight, so uh, we're going to let him be on the on the podcast yeah. as well. I don't know where that joker's at, but I keep hearing him in my headphones. He's enjoying uh, it. He's enjoying it. He's liking everything that you're saying. Um, it sounds to me like it's a pretty fun proposition. Yeah. Um, easy to get into. Yep. Maybe not on the expenses, but, you know, the tournaments, it seems like it's easy to get into for anybody. Just anybody can do it. Yep. Um Give me one recommendation on, you know, why they should do it, why anybody should try it, and maybe one thing to consider before they do it. Um, I I would say, well, you were talking about getting started into it. 
That first tournament that I fished at Hartwell, never fished Hartwell. It was cold. I took second place and big bass. And that was what really hooked me into it. Right. Um, and from that point, it was like, yeah, this I could do this every weekend. Right. Um, you you got to look at it as far as how much time do you want to invest in it? Mm-hmm. I mean, because you, you can be just the guy who goes up to one or two tournaments to fish a year just to kind of get out there and just kind of enjoy it. Um, or you can go all in and you can fish every trail and spend every single weekend fishing a tournament because there's one every single weekend right um all across georgia and there of course you've got alabama and tennessee and that's one of those that depends on how far you want to get into it and you you can get caught up in it pretty quickly Um, drive two and a half three hours to fish a tournament for one day know nothing about the lake just show up fish it and just see what happens right um that to me was kind of the adventure of it i I love going out and fishing new places just to see i mean everything fishes differently right so um advice wise take take the time and invest in good product Mm -hmm. because you do not want to be on a cheap kayak for hours you you don't want to be using a cheap paddle for hours um the paddle is way differently i mean you've got paddles that are 40 50 60 ounces and you've got other paddles that are 20 something right so you paddle it's like swinging a bat that's 32 ounces versus a bat that weighs 24 ounces yeah the big difference yeah so uh, just invest in in the right gear and know that hey if i'm going to do it either a understand that you're only going to do it just to play and kind of have a good time or b just fully jump into it and kind of get out there and try to learn and meet everybody and just spend your time and more or less go to different tournament trails and fish different ones. You can stick with one, but I, I would say fish different waters because it, it builds you up as a, as an angler. Okay. So, all right. Well, I, I tell you what, number one, I appreciate you coming in, uh, giving us just a little real quick intro into, into the world. I mean, we probably could talk for another eight hours. There's so many <laughs> things we could cover. We don't have time to do it tonight on this one. Uh, I might have to take you up on that spare kayak i think it'd be fun to fish one of them tournaments just to, yeah. for the experience so we, we might have to hook up and do that um josh is he's becoming a, a a part of the fish north georgia family and he's working on a lot of stuff with us so uh, i you know you're going to see a lot more of them here from us so i appreciate you know you taking the time thank you guys uh, come down here and uh we will root for you unless we're fishing against you. I appreciate it. And Same then, here. <laughs> and then and then we'll we'll root for you after we're done, you know, like that. So again, man, I appreciate it and uh eyes open a little bit and, and we'll see where it leads. So awesome. Thanks Sounds a lot. good. Thank you, sir. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Fish North Georgia Podcast and we hope you learned something. We hope you were entertained. So if you're checking us out on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you also can subscribe to us on iTunes and Spotify. You also can follow us at Facebook at Fish North Georgia and the Fish North Georgia group. Join both of those so you don't miss any of the latest conversations. You can give us a follow at Instagram on Fish North Georgia and on Twitter at Fish North GA. Guys, if you're interested in a lot of good products from a lot of North Georgia manufacturers, you can check our online store out at fishnorthgeorgia.com. And guys, we hope to see you soon.